Terraform and Ansible can be terrible, or they can be Ansiform. Bridging the gap between infrastructure provisioning and configuration management with these tools can be cumbersome. Siloed operations can create inefficient team workflows and put your infrastructure reliability at risk. Our Ansible capabilities include run and manage Ansible playbooks in large-scale or complex environments from a single centralized platform, getting visibility into Ansible managed resources, playbook execution status, and auditing results, delegate infrastructure provisioning and configuration management to developers with self-service workflows. Let's take a look at how Spacef extends your IEC orchestration capabilities beyond provisioning and configuration management. To simplify the management of your Terraform and Ansible stacks, we are going to leverage Spacelift's Terraform provider. For this example, we are going to create two Spacelift stacks. One would be for Ansible and the other one for Terraform. Both of them are going to be integrated with our AWS account. We are going to also create a dependency between them and share an output. Let's now take a look at the Terraform configuration. So in the Terraform configuration, we are actually creating multiple EC2 instances. We are then attaching um, AWS key pair to them and then uploading this key to AWS SSM. As you can see in the variables, right now we are creating five instances, each of them having an environment tag. Two of them are for dev, one is for QA, and two of them are for prod. All of these instances are going to form an output and based on the environment, we're going to actually create our Ansible inventory. If we now take a look at, our, at the Ansible playbook that we are going to run, in this Ansible playbook, we are first checking if the available disk space on the operating system is uh, greater than the threshold that we've set up here, which is two gigabytes. And this will fail automatically if the disk space will be lower than this threshold. Then for each of the hosts that we have in our inventory, we are going to install Nginx. And then we are going to leverage different templates depending on their environment. So we have a different environment for a different template for the dev environment, a different template for the prod environment, and a different template for the QA environment. Let's now go and create an administrative stack that will actually create all the space of the resources that you require. In my Spacelift account, I'm going to create a stack. I'm going to give it a name. Let's go for Terraform Ansible. Click on continue. Then I'm going to select my repository, which is the Spacelift Ansible examples repository. And then I'm going to select the project root, which is the folder from which I want to run my Terraform code. So this would be examples Ansible Terraform. And now I'm going to click on continue. I'm going to leave this as it is, using Terraform as the workflow tool, and I don't care about anything else. One important setting that I have to define is actually this one in stack behavior called administrative. So with this one, basically our stack will receive a runtime environment variable that gives uh, administrative access to other stacks within the same account, letting us create these stacks without having to provide any extra credentials to Spacelift. Now I'm glad with, with what I've done, so I can save and skip to summary. And in the end, I'll just confirm the creation. Now, as I arrived here, I can trigger run to create all of my space of resources. Let's wait a couple of seconds until this is done. The plan has finished, so now we can check what kind of resources we are going to create. So we are going to create two stacks, as I've mentioned before, a dependency between them, a dependency reference, so this would be the output, an environment variable for Ansible, and two integrations for our AWS account. So I'm glad with this, so I'll click on Confirm. So these resources have been created successfully, so now we can see the stacks if we go back to our stacks view. I will use the labels that I have, so I have an Ansible Terraform label, on uh, these two stacks. So this one uh, is the Terraform stack and this one is the Ansible one. If I go on the Terraform one and I trigger a run, at the same time, uh, at the Ansible level, a run is actually queued. 
So this will actually wait for the Terraform one to finish successfully. And after that, it will pick up the inventory from it and basically run the playbook. So now let's wait for the Terraform one to, to finish. The plan has finished, so we can check all the resources that we are creating. So we have five instances, we have the uh, TLS key, we have the output, we have the SSM private key, and also the key pair that's going to be used for all the instances to connect via SSH. Let's now confirm the run and apply the code, basically. Now that the code is applied, if we go back to the Ansible stack, we're going to see that this is going to start its run. So it waits for the run to be applied, as you saw there. Now, because that one finished successfully, the Ansible one has started. Before applying the Ansible code, we can see a plan of everything that's going to happen. So if we click on a host, we're going to see what's going to happen. So Nginx will be installed and the template will be done for the prod host. So because this is a prod host, in this case, this is a dev host. In this case, this is a QA host and so on. So now that I'm happy with it, I'll just confirm and apply the run. As you can see, our Ansible run is in progress. So it first gathered the facts for all of the hosts. Then it checks the available disk space and it fails when it's less than two gigabytes. And as you can see here in the output, all the disk spaces are 5.9 gigabytes. So that's why it passed. So this one is skipped. And now if you look here, Nginx is going to be installed depending on which um, environment tag your hosts have. So if we scroll down to the bottom, we are going to see that some of the tasks were okay, some were changed, some were skipped, and that's it. If we go back to our configuration management view and click on a host, we are going to see that the available disk space was greater than two gigabytes and we can also see it as a as a task detail or also we can check out the logs. Uh, if we click on install Nginx, we can see all the data from installing Nginx, but we can also see the, the details being more human readable in this way. If we click on the template, we're going to see that the template is changed and this is changed only for the prod, prod host because this is a prod host. And again, we can see the logs in here. And the other ones are skipped because this one is for QA and this one is for dev. And again, this is a prod host. And the same happens for the other host as well. Now, if you, for example, want to add another instance and apply your Ansible code, we can go back to GitHub and just make a small change. So I'll go to the Terraform dependency right here, select the variables.tf file and I can edit it in place and let's add another instance and let's do this for QA. So as soon as I commit these changes to the main branch, our Terraform stack is going to actually uh, start to run. So we can uh, actually go here and see it in action. So this is preparing the run so now let's wait for a couple of seconds to see the new instance in play. So as you can see, a new instance will be added and the output is going to be modified. So we will have a new instance in the output added as well. And this will be sent directly to Ansible and Ansible will actually um, refresh its, uh, its inventory. So let's confirm the run and we can now go back to our Ansible stack and wait for it to uh, start the run after the Terraform one finishes, of course. You are also getting data in real time about the dependency. So you can see the dependency run is in applying state right now. And as soon as it's finished, this one will start as well. The new run has now started. Let's wait for it to reach the planning phase. Now the plan has finished and as you can see five of the instances have a green dot right here which means that nothing is going to change for them but we have a new one here with the orange dot and here we will have changes and as you can see this will again template the Nginx index page for the QA host because this is a QA host. So now let's just confirm the run 
As you can see, our run has now finished and we can observe that one of the hosts, so the new one, has two changed items. And if we go back to the tasks, we can see that these two changed items are install nginx and the template of the index page for QA hosts. And now let me show you how you can change variables at the runtime level. So to do that, I'll just go to the readme here in my um, GitHub repository and I will copy this. So this is going to change our disk space threshold and we'll have to modify this value because right now it's two gigabytes and let's do something that will fail. Let's do like seven because we know that um, the available disk space is 5.9. So, so now let's go here and trigger with custom runtime config and I will add the disk space threshold to seven gigabytes. As you can see, this run failed because the available disk space is lower than the threshold, which is seven gigabytes. So this was expected. I just wanted to show you that you can easily manipulate variable values at runtime as well. You don't have to modify them directly in your code and this can be useful for testing purposes. This GitHub repository has five examples that you can leverage with, uh, with Ansible. Some of them are Ansible and Terraform. Some of them are just uh, using Ansible uh, as a self-service form for your infrastructure. We also have Ansible with the security vulnerability scanning checkoff. Uh, we also have Ansible with dynamic inventory. So what I've shown you until now was Ansible getting its inventory from Terraform, but you're not required to do that. You can use a dynamic inventory plugin. You can also use your inventory file directly. So it's up to you 100%. The last thing that I wanted to show you is actually our resources view. So Spacelift has an account level resource view in which you can see all your infrastructure resources that have been deployed. And if you click on them, you can get details about them. So in the same way, we have this uh, resource view for the infrastructure resources. We also have a configuration management view in which you can see all the hosts that you have inside of your um, a space of the count. So all the hosts are here. If you click on one of them, you're going to get again details of all the tasks or roles that have run on these uh, on these hosts. So you can click on one of them. You can see what's the status. You can get the logs. You can even see differences if they are available and things like that. And that's it. Thanks.